Doing great. A texter to this program right off the jump here wants me to congratulate you on making the St. John's Prep Hall of Fame, Bill O'Brien. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you very it, it had nothing to do with my playing ability. I can promise you that, but I appreciate it. Um, uh, it you know, St. John's Prep is a, is a great school, and, and um, you know, I, it's, I'm honored to be in the Hall of Fame. Thank you. And so I'm guessing we had your first contact with the female sex in college, or like when did you uh, when when, did, when yeah. did you meet your first <laughs> when did you meet your first woman? <laughs> no, we had, no we yeah exactly no no doubt about it. First, <laughs> all boys school um, don't really know how to how to answer that question, but yes yes the answer is yes. Um, I wanted to ask you about something Matt Rule said this week, which was essentially that uh, when you look at some some of the upsets in college football. Uh, Alabama, for instance, I think was, was what he was asked about. Um, he, he, he puts it all on the portal and NIL and essentially was saying that college has become like the NFL in, in tends to be when it comes to parity. Do you, do you agree with that? You know, I tend to, uh, I tend to agree with that. I, I, I told our team, you know, on Sunday that, it's a new age of college football. It's a wide open deal. And, uh, you know, Alabama lost to Vandy, which is, you know, unheard of. Uh, Tennessee lost to Arkansas. Uh, Michigan lost to Washington. Undefeated teams went down. And so, you know, I think it's going to come down to the teams that, you know, make the least amount of mistakes, the teams that, you know, understand that they have to learn how not to lose before they can understand how to win. That's what we're going through here at BC. We, we, we've got to, you know, understanding our two losses, we've turned it over. We've committed penalties that are, you know, unlike us. And so I, I do agree with Matt on that. I, th I think that there is parity across college football. Bill, how do you make sure that you're able to keep these kids focused? Because ultimately, I think in the NFL, it's the playoffs that you can get to. In college football, it's you're trying to get to the playoffs, but losing in college football is so much more devastating and in the NFL when it comes to making the playoffs. How do you get them to stay focused and stay committed to to saying that, okay, even though we lost a, a game or two games, there might still be a potential chance here for us to make the playoffs and not just be trying to get to a bowl game? Yeah, I, I don't think, yeah, I, I know, I understand what you're saying, and it's it's definitely true in the NFL wig, right? Like, you know, having been in that league and, you know, having been around teams that were really winning and the excitement and you had a chance to go to the playoffs and then you had the teams that, you know, you're you're like last year at the Patriots, you know, you're like four and 10 or three and 10 and you got no shot. Like that's, that's very difficult to keep guys motivated. But in college football, especially here at Boston College, it's, it's uh, you know, new coaching staff, you know, new way of doing things. You know, this place hasn't won eight games in a season in 15 years. So, you know, I think that there's a lot of different ways that we can, you know, keep these guys engaged. We have a great, uh, you know, group of leaders. Our six captains are, you know, good guys. They care about BC football. So, yeah, ultimately, you know, we're here and we, we want to win, but there's a lot more to it at BC. And, you know, we're, we're trying to talk more about the process rather than the results. Bill, when you look back at that game on on Saturday, you guys came out on the road, looked great in that first half, and then it just felt like a completely different game in the second half. Did did UVA just have you guys figured out when they came back from halftime, or or what happened to to let that one get away from you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, I don't think that UVA had us figured out. I think that we made mistakes that we can't make. I mean, we, we can't. Um, you know, turn the ball over. We, we couldn't get off the field on third down, third and 10, third and 13, third and nine. We, we had penalties. We had a targeting penalty. We had a hands to the face penalty that kept drives alive for them. Um, you know, we had a holding call that took away a 25 yard scramble by Tommy. You know, so we, we, we've got to like understand, you know, it really is a, a small margin of error and, and, and we've got to be on the, on the right side of that. And I think that's something that, that, uh, you know, I try to teach the team every day. The coaches try to teach the team every day, and that's hopefully we can we can really learn from that and and uh, you know be better the next time out. 
Your old team has to, the New England Patriots has decided to uh, to finally start Drake May. When it comes to a rookie quarterback stepping in at this time of the season as he is, what if you were his offensive coordinator, you were you were his head coach, what what would you be what are the important things to be telling him in advance of Sunday? I would say the first thing is uh understanding the operation, right? Like, you know, everything from the play call to the the mic point, the setting of the run blocking, the the setting of the protections, the you know, you know, keeping it simple, less plays. I wouldn't have 150 plays on the call sheet, I can tell you that. Uh less plays, uh plays that he really likes. You know, I, I was always into you know, making sure during the week that the that the quarterback understood, hey, this is what we're going to do, and do you like these plays? You know, are you comfortable with these plays, and do you see them the right way? And and so I think, you know, Drake May is a obviously an extremely talented guy. He's drafted at number three, and it's at a very exciting time for the Patriots. And so you got to try to keep it simple for him and talk to him about moving the chains and not trying to, you know, win the game in one drive. Billy, I, I'm, I've been trying to get the answer to this. I've asked Bill Belichick. I've asked Gerard Mayo. When you look at the Patriots, and you were there briefly and then there for a longer stint prior, is there frustration among the coaches or the you know rank-and-file players that there isn't more spending on offense? You just look at the Patriots' weapons, and you could maybe argue the, the Boston College Eagles have more of a deep threat. I, I don't... <laughs> I, I, was that a frustration for you, and was there is that ever explained to you why they they don't spend at that side of the field? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. We you, you know as assistant coaches, when we were there, you know we we were not what we would do. Curtis, I'm going to try to answer this to the best of my ability. We we would we would um, you know evaluate the free agents, evaluate the draft prospects. We would go over those those evaluations with Bill. And, you know, whoever was there. I mean, back in the day, you know, you had some of the best talent evaluators in the league there, right? You had Jason Light, you had John Robinson, Nick Casario. These guys are, you know, at the top of their profession. And so then at the end of the day, you know, those guys would make the decisions on who to draft or, you know, who to sign and, and all that. We were never privy really to that after we went over the evaluations with them, if that makes sense. So certainly, like, if we were sitting there, you know, as assistant coaches, we're all sitting there, maybe we go have a beer after work or whatever, we're like, man, wish we could have got that guy, but we didn't. So we move on and, and, and we, you know, we coach everybody that's there. So, you know, I think we, as assistant coaches with Bill, we weren't that involved in all those decisions. We just evaluated, gave him our opinion and moved on to what we were there for, which was to coach the players. Bill, when you look at, uh, and I know Greg asked a great question about the portal and, you know, talking about parity in college football. When you're evaluating your team, I know you're focused on the season, but when you start to evaluate what maybe potentially areas you could get better in, how do you, you know, decide whether or not you're going to jump into the portal? Because it seems like, you know, with the portal allows you to get better quickly versus maybe waiting on a kid who might be coming straight out of high school that it might take him a few years. Yeah, that's, a, you know, again, that's a really, you know, great question because, as a matter of fact, yesterday we had a, a roster meeting, and basically the roster meeting had a lot to do with, you know, where where we're at right now relative to, okay, these guys are, you know, in their fifth or sixth years, they're not going to be here next year. Okay, who's going to be here in 26? You know, it wasn't really a talent evaluation. It was more about, like, okay, we better make sure you know, a year out, two years out. That's the thing about us. We've got to make sure that we're looking ahead. We can't just, like, look right here to today relative to our recruiting people and myself. So, you know, there's no doubt that we've targeted some positions, you know, that we feel, hey, you know, we might want to look in the portal. The thing about Boston College, Wig, is, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to be very selective about who we go into the portal to get, right? You, you know, grad transfers are great here. You know, they're really good. Treshawn Ward is an example of that. You know, guys that, you know, they've already graduated. They, they can go to grad school here, get a grad degree, which is an incredible degree. You know, when you when you get a guy that's got three years left of eligibility, there, there was probably a problem with him at the school he's coming from, you know, relative, you know, and then now he's here and, you know, the, tra the, the credits don't transfer, things like that. It's just not really the philosophy that we want to 
really attack. We want to recruit high school guys and then maybe look in the portal for grad transfers. That's kind of how we're going to operate. Bill, being in the middle of a 12-day off period with a bye week, it, how, how have you guys been using that? How do you think the guys have responded to that? Do you feel like uh, you can use it to your advantage going into to a week against Tech? Yeah, th- these guys, Courtney, they, you, you guys as grads, you'd be very proud of these guys. They, they work very hard. They show up. They're, they're pissed off that they lost to Virginia. Uh, we've been in you know, full pads. Uh, we'll, we'll have a scrimmage today. Uh, we'll give them Friday, Saturday off. We'll be back to work on Sunday. We'll play Thursday night. Very difficult place to play, Virginia Tech. But these guys, you know, they're, they're, there's a there's a positive frustration, if that makes sense, because they feel like, you know, we, we gave the game away. Give Virginia credit. Like you said, they did some things, and, you know, maybe we didn't adjust very well, but, you know, we gave them the game. We turned the ball over, and these guys know they can be better than that. So these guys are showing up. And, uh, you know, they've worked very hard this week. I I really enjoy coaching the team. You know, Bill, the guy who runs the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers, is looking for a new head coach. I don't know if you're interested or not. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I don't know. The Jets. The Jets have struggled to get it right, you know, and, you know, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know too much about that organization. And um, but, you know, being in New England for the time that I was there, you know, that's a massive rivalry, obviously. And, you know, it just it's just been a struggle to get it right there. So speaking not sure it, what they're doing. Speaking of it being a rivalry, the, would that prevent Bill from going if, at some point? Or would that encourage Bill when it comes to choosing that as a landing spot? You know, I don't know. I It would be hard for me. You know, again, this is just my opinion. I, I haven't certainly have not spoken to Bill about that. But it would be hard for me to see, to see Bill and – you know, New York Jet Green. I, I don't know if I would. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I can't see that. But anything can happen, right? I, I've yeah. seen a lot over 32 years. Anything can happen. But it'd be hard for me to see that. But who knows? All right, one from the professor before we go, Shime. Uh Bill, I, I just if, philosophically, I was curious <laughs> about this because. So I don't know if you've seen uh, or, or kind of kept up with it all. Ashton Jaunty over at. Boise State already has a thousand yards rushing after five games, right. but it's a guy who has gotten only got offers from schools like Navy and Army, and never really got looked at by those big Division One schools like your Bama's, your Ohio State's, your Michigan's. I'm curious from your perspective how difficult it is to see guys like this and be like, "Wow, how does how do teams miss these guys with all the different?" video systems and and talent evaluators everywhere. How do you miss guys that just all of a sudden blow up in a way you never would have expected? Yeah, it's frustrating. You know, you, you, you try to do the best you can to project guys, right? And, and you know, like there's a lot of guys, Shyam, over the years that I've coached, especially in the NFL, and you, you'll be like, okay, where did, where did you play? And, you know, look, the, one of the best examples of all time is Julian Edelman, right? I mean, this guy was like, you know, Junior college, you know, Kent State, Kent State, you know, obviously the guy's a borderline Hall of Famer, right? So, like, how was he missed by, uh, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to pinpoint. And that's what I tell our coaches all the time. We have to do whatever it takes to find these guys because in the end at Boston College, some of the best players that ever played here, I remember talking to Matt Ryan over the summer. You know, Matt Ryan was not a highly recruited guy out of high school. I mean, he had, like, Wisconsin and B.C., I think, were his two final – offers you know he didn't have 25 offers so we have to do a good job of finding these guys that we believe we can develop and that can become you know great players for us i think that's the key to that's the key to what we're trying to do sean it's a great question please don't tell him it's a great question that's all we need around here though. (laughs) Um, he's getting a little he's a little big for his britches oh he's losing weight i I'm in Shime's camp, though. I, I listen to you guys every now and again, and I'm I'm on, I'm on Shime Island. Oh, I, know. I appreciate wow. you, Bill. Thank you. But telling him, <laughs> don't take his betting advice. Yeah, you'll be you'll have to be coaching over twenty years. <laughs> I mean, no, that... we can't bet. We're not allowed to bet. Oh, that's right. Oh, right. Uh, like... go, <laughs> yeah, if you ever need any extra eyes to go scout or anything, Bill, you right. you, you have my number. You can give me a call. <laughs> telling him, Bill, just an analogy, an analogy that you'll get. Telling Shime that that was a great question is like watching the, the Patriots offense a couple of years ago and telling Matt Patricia that was a great play that was designed. All right? That's, that, that's, I, I can't say. You could say that about last year's Patriots offense, too, so I'm not going to go down that road. All right. Have a great week off, and we will talk to you again next week. 
Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks.